so good morning dear students today we'll start with the third part of the chapter 1 the contents of this chapter are forces between multiple charges and here we will discuss about principle of superposition then we'll talk about electric field under electric field heading we'll be discussing about electric field strength or electric field intensity electric field lines electric field due to system of charges and finally electric flux so these are the few important topics we are going to discuss in today's class so let us start with forces between multiple charges so you have studied in the last class about force coulomb's law and expression for force and we have written the equation also f is equal to k into q1 q2 by r square there we have considered only two charges right q1 and q2 two charges and what is the force of interaction between these two charges and we have written vector form also now suppose if we have large number of charges okay a simple case you consider three charges if we have q1 q2 and q3 then what will be the net force so for this we have to consider an important theorem or important principle that is called principle of superposition so experimentally it is verified that force on any charge due to a number of other charges is the vector sum of all the forces on that charge due to the other charges taken one at a time the individual forces are unaffected due to the presence of other charges so this is called principle of superposition that is in simple words if you have three charges q1 q2 and q3 and if you want to find the force acting on q1 due to q2 and q3 what you have to consider one charge at a time you have to consider q2 will consider then we will find force acting on q1 due to q2 then we will find force acting on q1 due to q3 then we will find out the vector sum so this is principle of superposition so consider here if you have three charges okay three charges we are considering here consider this diagram vector notation we have used do not con confuse with this diagram so this is our origin hmm? then uh, three charges we are considering q1 q2 and q3 correct now this is origin so with respect to origin position vectors are marked the position of q1 is marked by r1 position vector r1 position of q2 by position vector r2 position of q3 by position vector r3 then you see here we want to find out the net force acting on q1 okay q1 for what are the forces acting on q1 due to q2 as well as due to q3 so one at a time we will consider force acting on q1 due to q2 how do you represent it f12 okay f12 and similarly force acting on q1 due to q3 how do you represent f13 okay f13 so net force acting will be f1 is equal to f12 plus f13 can we add simply like our uh, addition no these are vector quantities you have to use vector addition so in this diagram it is given this parallelogram law of vector addition is used so f1 is equal to f12 in this direction f13 in this direction so resultant force f1 will be the resultant of these two using parallelogram law of vector addition so this is how we find out the resultant force so like that we have large number of charges q1 q2 q3 q4 etc the net force acting on charge q1 due to other charges will be equal to f1 is equal to f12 plus f13 plus f14 plus etc so this is called principle of superposition so by this principle the principle of superposition states that when there are a number of point charges the net force on any one of the charges is equal to the vector sum of the forces due to the individual charges is it clear that is f1 is equal to f12 plus f13 plus f14 plus etc what is f12 force acting on one due to charge 2 f13 force acting on charge 1 due to charge 3 f14 force acting on charge 1 due to charge 4 etc 
So suppose if we are considering the general case of n number of charges q1, q2, etc., qn and we will apply the principle of superposition here. We want to find the total force F1 on charge Q1 due to all other charges. Then we can write F1 is equal to F12 plus F13 plus etc. F1n. And vector sum we need to consider. Not simple addition, vector addition. So this is how we write F1 is equal to F12 plus F13 plus etc. F1n. And using the formula force by Coulomb's law, we have the formula. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught will take common. Then inside the bracket, you have this term for this one. Q1, Q2 by R12 square into R12 unit vector. Then for F13, we substitute Q1, Q3 divided by R13 square into R13 unit vector plus etc. For F1n, we substitute Q1 into Qn divided by R1n square into R1n unit vector. So this formula is already we have seen directly substituted this formula. So this is how we find out the total force net force by applying principle of superposition. Clear? Okay, that is all about electric uh, force, Coulomb's law, electric force and force due to multiple charges. Now we will discuss another important topic of this chapter that is electric field electric field so field is a familiar term to you right even for uh, for your previous class lower class you have studied about magnetic field what is that field represents the region of space right the region of space around so if it is magnetic field where the magnetic effect but here electric field so electric effect so we define it qualitatively the region of space around a charge where it can exert a force of electrical origin on another charge that means a force can be exerted due to the effect of this charge that region in the space is called electric field now our definition of electric field or intensity of electric field at any point is the force exerted per unit charge by a positive terse charge we'll discuss this in detail so this is how we define the intensity of this electric field intensity of electric field at any point is defined as the force exerted per unit charge by a positive test charge kept at that point that means if you are considering a single charge single point charge there will be effect of this charge all around that charge right now we are introducing a positive test charge in the vicinity of this charge this point charge then how much force is exerted per unit positive charge? That is electric field intensity. That is, this is the equation or definition of electric field intensity. Mathematical definition is E is equal to limit Q0 tends to 0 F by Q0. What is this Q0? This is a unit positive test charge. Very small test charge. That's why we have used limit here. No need to worry by seeing this. Just you need to remember E is equal to force per unit test charge. So in detail we will consider electric field strength or electric field intensity which is denoted by capital letter E which is a vector quantity. So vector notation also should be there. So before going to the definition of electric field strength or electric field intensity we should use, uh, we are commonly using two terms here that is source charge and test charge. You should understand these terms. So a unit positive charge is called test charge. Okay. We are using the term test charge for this unit positive charge. Unit positive charge means its magnitude is 1 and it is positive. A point charge is called source charge. So it is not so small compared to this test charge but and it, it is not unity okay point charge is called source charge it can be positive or negative and its magnitude can be any so that is source charge so this is our source charge and test charge then we define electric field strength or electric field intensity both are same okay electric field strength or electric field intensity at a point in the electric field is electrostatic force per unit positive charge Okay, that definition we have seen now E is equal to force per unit positive charge. So let us consider a unit positive charge plus Q. Let this is our unit positive charge. 
which is called test charge. We use the term test charge for this plus Q. So this is our test charge, okay? Which is kept at a distance R from the source charge Q, okay? We have keeping a test charge at a distance R from our source charge Q. This capital Q is source charge. Then there will be a force of interaction between these two, right? Obviously, by Coulomb's law, there will be a force of interaction between Q and this Q. And that force is given by, by Coulomb's law, 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q into Q by R square. Okay? This Q is this positive test charge and this Q is the source charge. Okay? We have not written that positive here. It is understood that it is a unit positive charge and this is our source charge. So, F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q into Q by R square. Then by definition of electric field intensity or electric field strength is equal to F per this charge, which charge test charge, F by Q. So when you substitute, we will get 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q by R square. So this is our formula for electric field intensity, 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q by R square, where this Q is considered to be our unit test charge. In vector notation also, we can represent E. Okay, vector notation means using position vector and unit vectors. And now we got the relation between E and F. What is the relation between E and F? E is equal to F by Q. Or we can write F is equal to E multiplied by Q. That is, we can write in vector notation F of R is equal to Q multiplied by E of R. Okay, this is just we have represented using vector. So let us consider this case. So here, this plus Q is our source charge, okay? Instead of capital Q, we have a small Q only. No need to confuse. This is our source charge. Notation we can use according to our wish. And this is our test charge. This Q naught is our test charge. So here we have used test charge as Q naught and source charge as Q, okay? First case, so let us consider the first case. So both are positive. Anyway, unit positive charge, this is test charge is always positive. In any case, if you're considering test charge is positive. And source charge can be positive or negative. So in the first case, this source charge is positive. So what will be the direction of force acting on this test charge due to this source charge away from it, right? Repulsive. So this is the direction of force. Same way, electric field intensity direction also will be along this direction. Okay, very important point, the direction of electric field intensity will be same as the direction of force. Okay, how we are considering the direction of force, same way you have to consider the direction of E also. First case, now you see the second case, here the source charge is minus Q. I said no, source charge can be positive or negative, not necessary that it should be positive only. So in the second case, we are considering source charge as negative, but test charge will be always positive. So here negative and positive. So what kind of force attractive? So you consider the direction of force will be towards minus Q. Direction of force is towards minus Q attractive. So electric field intensity direction also will be same. Opposite to the direction of this force. Okay. So this is the notation terminologies we used in this particular example. So Q is the source charge. Q naught is the test charge. F is force and E is electric field. Then we can write E is equal to force per unit test charge. E is equal to F by Q naught. Okay, this is the formula. And if we are using Coulomb's law equation, E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square into unit vector. Okay, this is the equation. So remember, E is also a vector quantity just like force with the same direction of force. But only difference is here. In the equation here, E is equal to just one Q is there. Other Q is the unit test charge. So Q by R square. Only source charge will be there. Few points about the electric field intensity. Since test charge Q naught is taken as positive, the direction of electric field is along the direction of electrostatic force. We have seen the direction. For ex now, second case, if you are considering negatively charged particle as the source charge, then the electric field intensity direction will be opposite. Electric field is a vector quantity whose magnitude and directions are uniquely determined at every point in the field. 
the test charge is considered to be very small okay we have to consider the test charge as very small because it's not alter the configuration of the electric field then si unit of electric field is newton per coulomb because f by q f is newton q is coulomb so newton per coulomb so all these quantities si unit you should remember okay now we will move on to electric field lines electric field line just like magnetic field lines we it is the imaginary curves or representation of strength of electric field which is called electric field lines you can find the resemblance of magnetic field lines and electric field lines from these points so first point is it is the imaginary curves drawn in space to represent the strength of electric field okay this is imaginary curves or imaginary lines and here it starts from positive and terminates at negative all this point you should remember electric field lines always start from positive charge and terminates at negative and they are discontinuous curves it is not like magnetic field lines magnetic field lines you remember no it is continuous curves closed curves but here it is discontinuous the field lines are normal from the surface any surface you are considering the electric field lines will be normal from the surface now important thing is for positive and negative charge how the field lines will be for positive charge e directed e directs radially outwards and for negative charge field lines point radially inward so from seeing the diagram you will understand that for positive charge the electric field lines direction will be outward radially outward and for negative charge it will be radially inward and in order to find out the particular direction of electric field a tangent is drawn at the point on the line two electric field lines never cross each other okay parallel field lines represent uniform electric field uniform electric field is the term you often use throughout the chapter uniform field means same strength same direction same distance like that so they are parallel field lines see the diagram electric field lines if a charge is positive it will be radially outward this is positive charge q is positive radially outward if charge is negative minus q radially inward field lines are radially inward they are normal that's why they are drawn like this normal from the point charge radial suppose you have two positive charges how it will be two positive charges of so one positive charge radially outward it will go radially outward so there is a repulsive force exists between these two charges so near this region the direction of this field will be like this so this is how two positive charges electric field lines looks one positive and one negative how it will look like so always the electric field lines start from positive and end at negative that is a property so positive to negative field lines will be from positive to negative and for this positive outward for negative inward so like that it will look like so electric field lines representation is like this so for positive outward negative inward two positive like this two positive and negative like this so note down all this okay diagram also we should learn now let us consider electric field due to system of charges it is same as our electric force due to system of charges we have to apply principle of superposition same way okay superposition principle so electric field due to a single charge we know right what is the formula 1 by 4 pi epsilon q by r square if you have large number of charges the electric field at a particular point p will be the sum of the electric field due to individual charges that is principle of superposition so let us consider a system of charges q1 q2 etc qn with position vectors r1 r2 etc rn relative to some origin o so here you can see uh, where is q uh, this is q1 q2 q3 and q4 okay with position vectors r1 p r2 p like that notation is used here okay instead of just simple r1 r2 r1 p r2 p r3 p and r4 p so this is point p okay at this point we need to find out the resultant electric field okay at point p due to these entire charges so what how what we how will we find we will apply principle of superposition to find out the resultant field at p so it will be equal to 
e1 plus e2 plus e3 plus e4 right if you have constant four charges only the resultant electric field at point p will be field due to charge q1 that is denoted by e1 due to charge q2 e2 e3 and e4 so what addition we have to apply here vector addition that is the diagram is like that vector, triangular law or, or parallelogram law of vector addition we new, need to use So 1 by 1 we can write E1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 by R1P square into unit vector R1P. So this is the formula for electric field intensity. So E1 that is electric field at point P due to charge 1 is equal to this equation. R1P is the unit vector. Okay, unit vector. And this R1P is the distance between Q1 and P. That is clear in the diagram. Similarly, we will write E2. How, how it will be e2 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q2 by r2p square into r2p. This is our unit vector. This is the distance. Okay. It is clear no force and electric field the relation and how it differs that you should understand properly. Okay. There should not be any confusion. So resultant electric field e is equal to e1 plus e2 plus etc. En. In vector notation we have written e of r e1r plus e2r plus etc enr substitute the formula so we get 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r1p square into r1p plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q2 by r2p square into r2p plus etc this nth term so where these are r2p rnp all these are the unit vectors and and we will find out the resultant electric field due to all these charges and we can write the final equation using the summation sign okay summation symbol 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught sigma i varies from 1 to n q i by r i p square into r i p cap okay this is the resultant electric field due to all these charges q1 q2 etc q1 this simple you are familiar no sigma summation summation from 1 to n so 1 to n so this is our final equation e into delta s how many number of field lines crossing is proportional to e times delta s now we are considering another case if we tilt this area by angle theta then will it be same if you are considering planar element area just normal to this electric field lines almost all these electric field lines will cross this area right now second case if you are considering if we tilt this planar area by small angle theta the number of field lines crossing will be smaller few lines will not cross this area because we have tilted this area so accordingly the number of field lines crossing the area will also changes it will be smaller this diagram see if you are just tilting this surface area so the number of fields say this field line is not crossing this element so accordingly it will change so this is the first case the entire electric field lines are crossing this area in the second case if you see few lines are not crossing this surface area so accordingly we define a term called electric flux which is the number of electric field lines crossing per unit area so what are the factors it depends it depends upon the strength of this electric field obviously how many electric field lines are there that is there then surface area how surface area is oriented orientation of the surface area so we introduce a angle theta also along with this and here one important thing is the surface area no surface area we are considering this delta s as a vector notation in vector notation so i'll explain it so we define electric flux first electric flux is electric field lines per unit area okay electric field lines per unit area which is called electric flux it is denoted by letter greek letter phi okay phi phi is the notation used for electric flux it's a very important term electric flux which is electric field lines per unit area and electric flux is given by the formula for electric flux is e into delta s cos theta i said no it depends upon the orientation of the surface element so it is not just e into delta s but it depends e delta s cos theta 
and how can we write this e delta s cos theta as e dot d delta s dot product a dot b is equal to a b cos theta that you have studied so dot product of e and delta s will give you electric flux okay delta s is just the notation okay in some books you can see a also for area capital letter a also can be used so this is the delta s is the notation for electric flux so e dot delta s or e delta s cos theta will give you the electric flux what will be the si unit electric field intensity si unit is newton per coulomb so area meter square so si unit of electric flux is newton per coulomb meter square what about its um, nature whether it is a vector or scalar see dot product means scalar product dot product resultant of dot product will be a scalar quantity so electric flux is a scalar quantity but this electric field intensity is vector similarly delta s also we are considering as a vector quantity so these two vector quantities when we use dot product we will get a scalar quantity so e and area element are vector quantities and the direction of this area element delta s is always normal outwards normal outwards i will explain it in detail theta is the angle between e and area element vector i said no delta s we are considering as a vector quantity with direction normal outwards so the angle between that vector normal vector from the area element and electric field intensity that is angle theta so based on this equation when theta is equal to zero that is angle between the area element normal element and electric field is zero along the same direction the flux is maximum that is the first case we have seen in the diagram in this when if you are considering theta is equal to 90 degree so based on this equation cos theta cos 90 is zero so flux will be zero so when you do you get maximum flux when theta is equal to zero theta equal to zero means angle between electric field vector and normal vector is zero so i will explain what is area element this is a very important concept in physics area element we are using vector notation for area element any area element delta s its orientation is like this anyway if you are considering area element a vector which is directed normal outward that is considered to be the by convention that is the direction of the direction of this area element the vector associated with every area element of a closed surface is taken to be in the direction outward normal okay suppose a second case see this is a closed surface we are considering a small area here delta s what will be the direction of this area element normal outwards always it will be normal this area element vector delta s at a point on a closed surface equal to delta s into normal vector notation used for normal vector is n cap see n cap is the unit vector n we are using to represent it is normal okay normal vector so always along with this delta s no that's in delta s is a vector quantity we write in vector notation delta s into n cap what is the meaning of this it is this the delta s is the surface area magnitude and n cap is the direction normal outward okay this is how we are considering the area element okay that's all about this class hope you will understand this when you read the course book also so read the course book also i have written few homeworks read the session 1.8.2 which will explain about physical significance of electric field also do example problems 1.4 and 1.5 these two are easy questions okay so uh, uh, do this uh, read this and do this in your notebook okay thank you